Hey everybody, welcome back to Parkitect. I've decided what I want to do. I want to work on Happy Co Harbor, and there's a bunch of interesting stuff that I can talk about when it comes to this scenario. For one, it is one of the scenarios that I made, but unlike most of the scenarios that I made, I didn't come up with the title and description of this one, and I really love the description of it actually. So it is basically an old industrial harbor that you can redevelop into a theme park and it actually has those contractual uh, obligations and things like that as footnotes, which I didn't even know was possible in the descriptions. I think they just added that in here for this scenario, but that's pretty funny. I anyway, it's, it's a pretty unique scenario because we need to get a slightly different goal. We need to get three coasters in the park with an excitement rating of 50 or above have a decoration rating of at least 80%, which is a completely new goal, but to be honest, given how I've been playing the scenario so far, I think that shouldn't be too difficult. And finally, have to get 600 guests into the park. So, a really cool set of goals, kind of unique compared to what we've seen so far. So let's take a look at the scenario map itself. Alright, so here we are. This is Happy Co Harbor, and a little fun fact, I suppose, that I haven't talked about much or that I haven't seen other people talk about much either, is uh, I based this scenario in the Netherlands, actually. So <laughs> you could tell that the sea level is actually slightly higher than the height of the land behind this dike over here. And this house, I tried my best to go for the classic Dutch red brick and orange red-ish roof combination there. So this is ideally somewhere in the Netherlands. And I was actually mostly inspired for this scenario from, by uh, a project which is currently underway in Rotterdam. I don't know much about the future of this project, but uh, it's called Attractie Park Rotterdam. And um, plans are underway to turn a old um, garbage burning facility in Rotterdam into a theme park, which is uh, currently underway. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that does mean that given the setting, we aren't exactly in the hills, uh, we're not exactly in a natural environment, and we're also in a pretty tight spot. There's not a lot of space in this park. All we have is this grassy field here, and I believe we can expand into this section of the land as well. So that's quite good. I've seen a lot of people actually already finish the scenario and I've seen a lot of people work just on this part of the land. So I'm going to have to see if I can you know, finish the objectives and a decent park within this or whether I also want to use this part. But we'll see what's going to happen to that. Anyway, uh, I don't think I can do much with this theme. I can't exactly put a medieval town or some kind of Asian scenery in the middle of this part. So I'm going to have to try my best to come up with a way to actually theme this land Maybe it's going to have to be similar to the airport theme that I went for quite a few episodes ago, uh, but we'll see. I'm actually very curious to see what kind of rides and coasters we have here, uh, because I made this scenario like over a year ago, and I'm not even sure if they changed anything. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure if this was always the set of rides that we got on this scenario, but it is quite limited. So I think the first thing that I'll research is coasters, because we do need to get three of those up, and they need to have a pretty high rating as well. And looks like we have decent calm rides and thrill rides to start off with. I think this will actually be a really good map to build some go-karts as well. Haven't done that so far. So, yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to make of this, but let's see. Although, before I go on, I just want to point out this boat. This is absolutely amazing. They actually got a Happy Co logo on the boat. That is super cool. I, I did, and actually, not just the boat, even on the cranes, that is really cool. I built these buildings and things like that, but uh, all of the Happy Co stuff has definitely been added after that. So, really nice scenery. It's actually a very immersive, uh, pretty much fully developed port with uh, some industrial activities like oil refinery and stuff like that going on. Even these have signs. Oh, they're making tires here. Oh, that is oh, that is awesome. Well, I I'm going to I'm going to stop talking about the scenario and actually build some stuff. Let's go. All right. So, I decided to do something very similar to what I did in Amity Airfield and keep the theme of the park quite generic and related to the port around it. 
Although I will get into some Dutch details here and there, so you might be able to tell that it's in the Netherlands, but it's not themed to be a, a, a Dutch themed park, so to speak. So actually I lost a bit of recording there because my hard drive was completely full because the newest Planet Coaster Uzuri Gardens episode is ridiculously big, but hopefully that thing should be out of the way pretty soon and I can start not having to manage so tightly my resources. But basically what you missed is uh, me building this food court building, which is very simple, although it does have a new overhang which I quite like. I've never tried using the cable pieces to make hanging overhang sections, but I think it looks really nice and elements like this can definitely make a very simple, boring industrial building, which this pretty much is, a little bit more inviting and communicates that this is actually a, a food court building where you are invited to go inside. And next to that I decided to add the twister as well as a small toilet building. So we got sort of a row of facades and a main street and an entrance plaza but really it's all quite small and uh, crammed even. I also have to say I'm gonna try to fit the whole park on this section of the land just because I think I might be able to. So I want to try at least and if it doesn't work out I can always use the other piece of the uh, the port as well. But honestly I think it'll be fine. Hopefully I should be able to fit everything on here. The reason why I think it'll be nice to do this is to make sure that the park is really compact and try and fit as many things into this space as possible while at the same time not making the park feel too tight. Kind of like Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. I've always really respected how much that park manages to fit in a tiny footprint, yet it doesn't really feel like it's packed too tight. Everything is nicely spaced out from each other and there's enough path to walk around. Even when I was there during the World Cup, or actually during the European Cup, and they were showing a match live in the middle of the park, it wasn't even too overcrowded. They can handle really large crowds for how small the park really is. So I want to go for something similar to that here. Obviously we're not in the middle of the city like Tivoli is, but still, land is very limited. And finally, to get a bit more of a thrill ride in here, I built the drop tower and by now you might be able to notice that I'm a really big fan of this ride, mostly just because it fits in a very small footprint, so it's really easy to fit this into any park. Um, but also it's just a very fun ride. I'm not necessarily a big flat ride person, I'll usually just ride flat rides in parks between coasters, or to fill up the rest of the day when I've already done the coasters in a park. But drop towers are definitely some of my fla my favorite flat rides out there. And honestly, sometimes even some of my favorite rides in certain parks. I think the drop tower in Movie Park Germany is probably the best ride in the park. So they're not too shabby as far as flat rides are concerned. And finally, I decided to start work on a monorail station and a small piece of track. But how the rest of this monorail is going to flow kind of depends on what the rest of the park is going to look like. So I'm not going to finish this yet. I'll just see how I can squiggle the monorail track through the other areas of the park that I'll be building. So this monorail will most likely only be finished once I finish the rest of the park as well. So it's a, it's a bit of a layout choice because again, I don't really plan these layouts out. I just build at any time what I feel like building. Uh, and sometimes I think that demands some management of where you're going to build things and how to not work yourself into a corner where you have to waste some space, especially because space is very limited in this scenario. So finally, it is time for the first coaster, because we do need to get three of these. And also from a gameplay perspective, I do also want to get a good coaster in with my starting money because these are the most important money makers in the game. And boy, this coaster turned out to be quite the money maker, but we'll get back to that later. Basically what I decided to build is a Premier Rides LIM coaster, which is an older type of coaster from the 90s, which was one of the first really revolutionary launched coasters. I think the first ones were Flight of Fear in Kings Island and Kings Dominion and um, 
These are indoor rides, so their layouts have been built specifically to fit into a building, so they're very compact. But some later versions, like Joker's Jinx, for instance, at uh, one of the Six Flags parks, it kind of takes a very similar layout, uh, but puts it outside, very similar to Rock and Roller Coaster in Disneyland and Express in Walibi Holland, respectively. Um, so these layouts tend to be very compact, but do have a segment with a, a separate station and a launch track, which I thought fit very well into this park because space is so limited and I basically just have to reserve a very small part of the space of this park to the uh, main layout of this coaster. And also these things look really cool from uh, a distance, I think. They, they have a really cool skyline, so I thought it'd be nice to put this out on the waterfront and have it be a coaster to look at as well. Especially for those who don't want to ride it, but still want to see other people ride the coaster. So that is basically it for this layout. The layout is actually very similar to the real LIM launch coasters as well, starting off with a Cobra roll, as most of them do. And from that point onward, it's just a layout of many curves and drops, uh, as well with uh, a corkscrew somewhere near the end. And in this ride, I also decided to put a zero G roll in the middle of the layout as well. It's not as it's not quite as compact as the real life versions, but to be honest, I couldn't really fit a lot more curves into it. It's also a bit smaller, so I'm limited there. And I still wanted to build something below the coaster track as well, which I'll get to in a second. For now, I'm just working on some of the basic scenery for this ride. It's not very themed, but it does have some basic scenery. So I'm adding a station and some catwalks, and that is basically it. And before I move on, I wanted to build the ride underneath it, which I decided could be the go-karts. Because usually go-karts are not the most efficient thing, I would say, for a compact park like this, because you're wasting a lot of space and you're not really using uh, vertical space well enough, I would say, since it's completely flat. Um, so I thought it'd be good to just drop it underneath the coaster. There's enough space to do that, and the coaster is slightly off the ground pretty much for the whole layout. So. I think that works out really well and I just built the go-karts coaster layout or uh, the go-karts layout in such a way to avoid all of the supports of the coaster. So it's not the best layout for a go-karts track but I've built it this way to make sure that the coaster isn't under supported. Uh, so I think it's a, a decent compromise there. And finally for this part of the playthrough, I decided to finish up some of the detailing and the scenery around the coaster and the go-karts. First I built the balloon stall, but then I realized that you get these weird balloons to go with it, and I didn't quite like the look of that small building in the middle of the plaza there, so I decided to replace that with a first aid stall, which is a new stall. I haven't seen that in any of the scenarios so far. I don't know if it's too necessary to have it, I'm not even exactly sure how it helps in this game, but I guess we'll see. I thought it fits in that space anyway, so uh, yeah, there it goes. And there's not going to be any other rides in this area, to be honest. I'm really just finishing up some of the scenery, but the focus here is going to lie on the coaster and the go-karts underneath it. I also made this area very vibrant with a lot of foliage and things like that, which I maybe tend to do a bit too much, especially on the desert scenarios, I still plant a lot of trees. So that may not be the most realistic thing, especially in this setting as well, because given that this is actually an industrial site, or in this case a post-industrial site, areas like these are typically very contaminated and the soil will be very polluted. So in real life, when uh, they are transforming previous industrial areas into parks or new residential areas, very typically they need to renew the soil and make sure that everything is cleaned. And uh, I'm not sure how that whole process would have gone here, but this park is really surprisingly vibrant for being in the middle of a previous industrial area. So as far as realism goes, I'm not too sure how good it is that I just planted a bunch of birch trees and all kinds of big other foliage elements in here, but it just looks too good not to do it. So. I'm gonna keep doing that to be honest. And uh, yeah, that is basically it. I'm just finishing off this little house here, which has the, uh, what stall has that? The umbrella stall, which is always a good way to make money. 
And uh, that is basically it for this part of the time lapse. So let's take a quick look at how the park is doing. So Hepico Harbor isn't doing too bad for itself and it's mostly actually due to this coaster which is one of the most profitable coasters that I think I've built in the scenario so far, nearly 2000 and I could probably even raise the price on this because it has an extreme excitement rating so $15 is probably going to be acceptable, I might even keep raising it just to see how much people are willing to pay for this thing um, but yeah, I think the reason that it's so efficient is that I can basically ask a ridiculous price, uh, but the layout is quite short and it doesn't have to waste time on a lift hill or anything like that. It just goes straight into the launch and into the rest of the layout. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a, a tangled mess of coaster track. Fun fact, this coaster type is... I think pretty much officially, but definitely de facto known as a spaghetti ball coaster because they, they look like spaghetti balls. That is uh, basically about it. I don't even know what the, what, what the history behind this is, but you can find actual articles and websites referring to this as a spaghetti coaster. So that is pretty funny. Um, but they seem like really fun rides. I've never been on one personally, but uh, it's, it's good for the amount of space that it takes up. Really nice compact ride here. And then underneath that we have the go-karts, which has a bit too short of a queue but altogether it's not doing too shabby either. Uh, not very profitable, but it's definitely more as a scenery thing, I think, than uh, an actual ride to bring in the profit. That said, I can probably raise the price on some of these rides. I've definitely noticed, and uh, this is something that I mentioned in the last video, but I don't think I really went into detail with it later. Uh, but I definitely noticed how scenery can make your rides a lot more profitable. I always thought that my focus on scenery was uh, kind of counterintuitive, at least in terms of gameplay, uh, because you spend a lot of money on scenery, but really the ratings of your rides will also go up significantly because of scenery. So if you look at the Twister, for instance, it has a 33.6 excitement rating, uh, whereas if I place a new one, let's say somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, it's gonna have 20.5 so the scenery makes a huge difference and that is actually part of the reason why my parks are so profitable so as i discovered it isn't the case that my parks are doing less good because of the scenery but they are actually much more successful because of scenery so uh highly detailing your parks and gameplay go kind of hand in hand in some ways also and this is something that i haven't mentioned about the scenario itself yet but one of, the, one of the ideas behind this scenario is to force the, the uh, player to focus a bit more on scenery uh, because, of course, one of the goals is to have a decoration rating of 80%. And as you'll notice, if you go to the visualizations and you click on decorations, all of the buildings outside of the map of the park itself are in purple, which means that all of these buildings are subtracting from your decoration rating. And if people see any of these things outside the park, uh, they will rate the decoration less. Hence why I put these fences around the entire park and wherever I could, I put some trees as well. And this pretty much solves the issue. It's not a very difficult issue to solve, but I've definitely seen players struggle with the decoration rating of this scenario. So. If you are struggling with uh, reaching the, the objectives because of that decoration rating, try to make sure that you don't see anything that's outside the park from inside the park itself. Um, but yeah, you can do that quite easily with trees or fences or things like that. Not with terrain because that is actually limited, you're not allowed to change any of the terrain here. Uh, but scenery options can definitely help here. In any case, that's it for what I wanted to say here, I think it's a good time to get into time-lapse again and start building some stuff. And I hope that I would be able to finish this scenario with this plot of land here. I need two more coasters and I'm thinking of building a wooden coaster around the perimeter of the park here. And then once my research is done on the hydraulically launched coaster, build something like Kanonen in Liseberg over here. We'll see if that actually fits somehow, uh, but it sounds like a decent plan, so let's go. 
Alright, so those were the famous last words of a previous version of me a few hours ago. Just before I would spend more than two hours trying to build some simple coasters and park techs. And I realized that making compact coasters wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Which, to be honest, it usually isn't. It's very often really a puzzle of trying to get things together. Because you're not just going out to build a layout that would be fun on its own, but also you need to fit it into a very tight space. And in this case, in this scenario, I'm also really limited by the fact that I need both of these coasters to have an excitement rating of 5 as well. And I can't terraform, so I can't really go underground. And there's also the monorail station, which for some stupid reason I decided to build there. And I figured that instead of redoing that whole thing and getting rid of the monorail station, I would try and work my way around it. Terrible idea, and that pretty much sealed my fate, but um, here we are, and I'm trying to build a compact woody. So you can already see that I've been rebuilding the station a few times. I'm gonna keep it in the current position that it's in, because I think the first drop and the first hill at this point are pretty much perfect. I'm just trying to make the rest of the layout fit into this space. Uh, without being too short either. I definitely want to get a good amount of curves and a good amount of airtime moments into this layout. I was inspired by, uh, most of all, a coaster called Mindblower, which is a gravity group woody, as well as what I believe is called Twister in Gronalund, which is also a gravity group woody. I really like the looks of these coasters. Uh, they're also very compact and they have this really cool wooden uh, track and steel supports combination with the white supports which I think looks absolutely amazing and it's something that I don't really do often enough so I decided to go for that combination today instead instead of the regular old kind of dark brownish completely wooden wooden coaster uh, so I think there's a fun variation there so at this point in the process I came up with the layout um, so if you're thinking that I already finished the layout and I didn't struggle as much as I predicted with this thing, then um, mark my words, we're gonna come back to this thing later because this layout isn't anywhere near done yet. Because at this point I had to figure out how to get the monorail back into the station, which uh, was also a bit annoying because there really is no space at all. So the only thing that I figured out could work with this layout is these two curves on the side. Coming back to the station in a really awkward way, but it comes back to the station. So I thought it was decent and I would figure out how to build the launch coaster around that later. For now, I wanted to get back to the supports of the wooden coaster because uh, due to all of the overlapping track sections, there's a lot of floating track and I wasn't all too happy about that. So I decided to custom support some parts of the coaster just to make it look a bit more realistic and make sure that we don't have these weird floating parts. And at this point, I deleted the whole layout because I realized that the clearance on this was completely off. So the game lets me build that whole layout with no problems, uh, but then when I ran the test rounds and I checked what it was looking like, it turned out that the, the cars were actually going through the supports on multiple stages. So Basically what I did is, with a lot of very smart banking and uh, almost too close track pieces, but not quite, with a lot of puzzling, I ended up creating a layout which uh, didn't clear the track properly and had the heads of the people beheaded quite a few times on the supports of the track above it, so I decided to remove that whole layout because I didn't really like how unrealistically uh, terrible and deadly it looked. So. I wanted to change that and that was basically the reason why I had to go back into this and figure out a completely different way to finish this layout. So another plan that I had was coming back to the back of it, um, which gives us some good space to build some airtime hills. Uh, only struggle here is this curve down on the other side, which is very low to the ground and I still need to go underneath that. Uh, there's really no other option to go anywhere else at the back of the coaster. As you can see, I did try it over here. Um, but I really didn't think it looked very good. I wanted the way back to be one tile right next to the lift hill because then you are reusing your support structure for the lift hill and that is a very typical wooden coaster thing to do. I just think it looked a lot better. So that whole plan backfired. I'm not going back to the back of the park. Instead, I'm going in front of this other hill 
trying to figure out some other way to return and I end up basically not going for this curve, which I thought at first was really nice, but um, this actually takes up a lot of land that is very valuable because I also need to make this coaster as tight as possible because I need to conserve space for the launch coaster which I want to build after this. So uh, yeah, I, I was starting work on the launch coaster here, so that went pretty smoothly. I want to make this an Intamin Accelerator with uh, a very standard layout, I would say. Going into a top hat and then finishing the layout in whatever way I could. But then I quickly realized that the wooden coaster was stopping me from doing anything that I wanted to do. So I had to rechange uh, the wooden coaster. Uh, I guess rechange is a word now. Um, just to make sure that I had enough space for the launched coaster over here. Which I still didn't, I still had to go underneath the wooden coaster track and none of that worked out really well so I had to move up the station and launch of the launched coaster again. Rebuild that, that top hat and thank god it finally fit. So I thought alright we're gonna pull a stealth here, we're just gonna go into the top hats and then we're gonna come back into the brakes and that'll be the ride. Uh, but then I built it and I really wasn't too happy with this. Sure, it works, but it's just it's just kind of boring. I thought I would be able to do something more with it, kind of like Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. So I set out to make something like Accelerator, maybe have a few more hills and curves before we head back into the station. And that turned out to be quite a struggle as well. Because now that the wooden coaster is here, there really isn't all that much land left in the park. And it's going to be hard to actually return to the station properly. So um, eventually I ended up going for the very figure 8 shape of Accelerator itself. Just because that works the best. I think all of these other attempts at going to the waterfront and over the wooden coaster just never really turn into anything. Because the wooden coaster is completely in the way there. So um, yeah, I'm finding out some way to return alongside the launch track here. So finally I get to a figure 8 that sort of works. Still need to adjust that a little bit and make it fit a bit better. Uh, but altogether I think this is a decent layout. Uh, and yeah, in addition to what I'm trying to do with fitting in the track, I also need to fit in the supports because I don't want to lose any supports in this coaster. I don't want to have any large track sections that are unsupported. But as you might know, having any kind of ride uh, paths, trees, or uh, really pretty much anything underneath any of your supports removes their supports. So I need all of the grid spaces where the supports of this ride are going to be placed to be completely free of objects as well. So one of those curves has its support nudged in the middle of that helix of the wooden coaster. Some of the other supports are snaking around paths and next to the monorail. Uh, but at last, it finally fits and I got a layout which sort of works and has a long enough brake run to realistically get the coaster down to a decent speed without snapping the necks of the riders. Uh, so yeah, th this is uh, with a little bit of off-ride footage where I was trying to figure out stuff. This is basically the process of how I got to these coaster layouts. I know it's been a bit grueling, uh, definitely for me, but also to watch, so I'm sorry if it hasn't been the most interesting um, speed build but at the same time it was a too much part of this process to cut it out I still wanted to show what this looked like and how I was gradually figuring out how to fit everything in this park together without making it too crammed so at this point I realized that the monorail in the game can actually have a back and forth mode instead of a full circuit so that's amazing I didn't know that was a thing but that makes my life a lot easier. That means that the station of the monorail isn't as dysfunctional as I thought it was. I can just have that thing go back and forth between that station and another station, providing transport across the park, which is in a way kind of pointless because the park is super tiny anyway, but it's a mini monorail. I think it's, it's still valid. I've seen smaller monorails in real life. So uh, even the monorail ended up working out in the end. And finally, I can even add some flat rides in the middle of these coasters as well and try and fill in the park as much as possible. Um, because really, I wasn't just trying to, you know, fit as much as I could into this park. I was also trying to not make the park feel like it's too crammed. I definitely wanted to try and make the layout in such a way 
that it still feels natural and you still have a bunch of scenery and flat rides everywhere, very much like Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. So yeah, in the end that was kind of my goal and that's why I struggled so much with this as well. I probably could have built some very simple, super compact layouts of coasters and call it a day, but I definitely wanted to try and make the most of the limited space that I had and try and plan very well what I would do with every grid tile of the park so nothing gets wasted. So that's why things end up taking a lot of time, um, but I think that's also a very important part of the process of trying to puzzle a park like this together. And it really does feel like a puzzle uh, because when you have this few grid spaces to play with, everything really becomes, you know, a, a jigsaw puzzle of trying to fit different pieces together. Uh, putting the coasters together and filling the spaces in between up with paths and flat rides and buildings and even making sure during the whole process to leave enough room for things that you still want to build like the the room that I left between the wooden coaster and the launched coaster uh, to try and build some flat rides as well as the monorail which was supposed to go through this whole area. So there's definitely a lot of planning going on in uh, a playthrough like this. But yeah, in the end, I think it works out all right. Uh, definitely not the best layouts, but I think these are kinds of kind of coaster layouts that you could take out of this park, make some blueprints of, and they can still do a good job in a different park, and it won't look like the layouts were uh, shoehorned into a ridiculously small footprints because of the limitations of the park that they were made for. Um, what I did struggle a little bit with was trying to fit stations of the monorail and the wooden coaster into this area while at the same time having some kind of boulevard still on the side of the sea here. So what I ended up going for is a very small queue on the monorail and um, a back and forth small uh, cattle pen in the middle of the wooden coaster here where I also want to put a building here. Um, so that just adds to the, the scenery of the area as well. Also, I haven't mentioned this, but I probably should. The flat rides that I put in are the Gravitron and the uh, Motion Simulator, which aren't my favorite flat rides, but to be completely honest, they are the only ones that fit in that space. I had a lot of research done, and every time the research teams just gave me really big flat rides that I couldn't do anything with, and I was just like, guys, Please give me something with a small footprint, so I eventually just ended up placing these things because they fit best, especially the, the motion simulator. That thing just fits anywhere. I really love that, that footprint. So yeah, I would have probably placed a jumper or some kind of more interesting flat ride into these areas if I could, but realistically there's really no space for it. I, I even, even trying to place those bigger flat rides made me realize just how small this park is because they were on their own just taking up space of maybe half the size of the launch coaster's whole layout. So yeah, that didn't go very well. Some of the flat rides in this game really are quite big. Now we're getting to some slightly more exciting parts again. Now that all of the coasters and the stupid puzzling action is done, it's time to get back into scenery. And for this building, I figured, ah, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna build one building with a slightly Dutch flair to it. We are in the Netherlands after all. I, I can't, I can't leave it behind. I'm nationalist like that. So uh, we're building uh, very much a, a Zandam kind of house here with the traditional green uh, wooden walls and those typical charming white gables and the red roofs. It's just iconic combination. I really love it. And even though I'm not going for anything too aggressively Dutch, it's just the use of materials and colors, I think, that that definitely takes you back to the fact that this, is, this park is supposed to be somewhere in the Netherlands, even though that's not per se the theme of the park itself. And then for the, the building over the queue, I'm keeping that simple. It's a queue cover. Realistically, those things aren't too often very well themed, so I'm keeping this as simple as I can, really. Although that said, I think the station building of the wooden coaster is by far the most decorated building of the park, but I think it fits the, the wooden coaster as well. I ended up going for a sort of high-tech station on the launch coaster, because that's just one of those high-tech rides. It just feels right for it. And um, the same goes sort of for the other launch coaster, but um, 
that one already is a bit more traditional, but this one for the wooden coaster is definitely the weenie of the park, if you will. I should also say the reason, partly, that I didn't go for a Kanonen like Intamin launch coaster, like I said I would go earlier, is because I was looking at Kanonen and I pretty much realized that it was doing just about the same thing that the, uh, the other launch coaster, the spaghetti ball coaster, does. You know, just launch your, your riders into some inversions. Uh, and curves and that's pretty much it so because those rides are very similar I decided to go for a ride that focuses more on the sensation of speed uh, so this ride is now more like accelerator and stealth and top thrill dragster etc just a really small version to be sure to fit it into this park and in this whole last section of the uh, scenario this is also quite interesting I had to redo a bunch of things about the wooden coaster because I didn't meet the 50 excitement rating criteria. So basically, I have to make sure that the uh, the park gets a good scenery rating, which isn't too difficult. You really just have to make sure that you don't see anything outside of the park, from inside the park, but as soon as you just build a few scenery elements, uh, you should be good to go on that one. What I didn't realize was that from the coaster you can see everything outside of the park, so this wooden coaster had a bad scenery rating even though there's a lot of scenery around it because you can see the outside of the park and we've got all of these terrible industrial buildings giving us a negative rating here. So I decided I need to do something about that and hide all of those industrial buildings. Uh, so what I came up with here is to build these uh, fences or really these wooden walls on the side of the wooden coaster which are usually built as sound protection to protect the neighborhood around it from the sounds coming off the coaster. But in this case, I'm using it to prevent the guests of the park from seeing the unholy industrial area that is just outside the park's boundaries. So a bit of a different thing here. I also added some extra white supports to the coaster for good measure. I think that just makes the whole support structure look a little bit nicer and um, even supporting some parts of the coaster a little bit more. And finally I added some lights and flags on the lift hill to make that a bit fancier because wooden coasters with decorations on the lift hills are awesome. And that is pretty much it for this scenario. So let's see how it's doing now. Alright, so here's the park. It's doing not too shabby. And I think this is also the first time ever that I can show the whole park in a single screen just because this one is so tiny. Now I should be reaching the goal pretty quickly because I need to get to 600 people and I've already reached the other objectives. So that should be fine. And uh, one last look at the coasters just to check their stats. Basically it tells us that this one has decent stats I would say, although this first launch coaster is definitely the best stats with an extreme excitement rating. And then the wooden coaster has 50.5 which is just enough to make the scenario um, but it's really not quite as bad uh, or, or quite as good and the decoration is still bad but I don't think I can really do anything about this because it's just too close to the park border and if anything it is really trying to shield the rest of the park from the terrible ugly industrial wasteland that lies behind it so there's another thing which I think is worth noting before I reach the goal here, which I'll probably do first anyway, is that I did do a, a poll and somebody suggested to do some kind of poll for favorite coasters and stuff like that on the last video and I don't know if they meant to do the in-game poll but I thought it would be interesting to actually do the market research and this is usually something that you can use to try and figure out what you can improve on your park. Uh, but in this case I'm just using this to figure out you know, how did the park do in the end and what are people thinking about it. So they, they actually think the prices are fair. I have to say I raised the price on this thing to $16 at some point and that was too steep for them. So definitely went too far there. Um, ooh, they do prefer some slightly intense rides. That's definitely good to know actually. Um, they're not super hungry, which I guess is good. Not super thirsty either. I think the park is really clean. So that's really nice. Decoration rating is actually really high despite the wooden coaster being bad and vandalism isn't too bad. And the top thoughts are that the scenery is amazing. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I really like these stats actually. This is, this is a part of research which I haven't shown before simply because I haven't made use of it. Um, 
but it is definitely something to keep in mind and I do know for a fact that different scenarios will have different guests preferences especially for when it comes to what kind of intensity they prefer on rides uh, what kind of food or drink uh, preferences they have and even how much money they carry so the guests on Mystic Oasis really are richer than the guests on the other parks for instance now I was hoping to get to 600 guests here because I was well, marketing the park pretty aggressively, but I think we're not quite there yet. But if I fast forward for a few seconds, I think we should be getting there eventually. Yeah, they're slowly getting in in larger numbers than they are leaving, so that's good. I'm not going to do the old trick of closing the park entrance by putting a no entry sign in front of it. I'm going to try my best to never make use of that strategy because that is just unethical, even if it did work quite well on Rollercoaster Coon. So yeah. Here we go. That is the scenario successfully compl- Oh my- Okay, I'm gonna have to hold this for three weeks. Well, I'll see you guys in three weeks time. Three hours later. In the meantime, let's actually do some POVs and stuff like that. So, uh, here's the wooden coaster. It's not doing too bad. It definitely has a few parts where you can tell that I was trying to cram this in a tiny space, but I definitely think that this is the best layout that I came up with. And um, it's a little bit slow on this part because we have to cover a lot of ground there, but not too slow. There's a decent airtime hill with the tunnel here, and finally with an S-Bend back over the queue and back into the station. And I hope that we can catch a ride on the launched coaster. Uh -oh! Looks that way. I think it's in the station at the moment, yeah. So, okay, it's launching. Very nice. Let's actually turn off the UI for a second here. Um, so yeah, that, that is the launched coaster. Doesn't catch too much airtime on the top hats, but again, coming back to the discussion of the last episode, I think, for me at least, the speed of a lot of these rides feel fine, scaled to the uh, cartoony size of everything in the game. I think it would be interesting maybe to build one of these coasters in Planet Coaster and try to do it on the same scale that I imagine these coasters on and see if the speeds are different in any way. I definitely think that the coasters in Park Tech speed up and slow down a little bit faster, uh, but it's really not quite as fast as coasters would be in Roller Coaster Tycoon, for instance, and I think it's really the comparison to Roller Coaster Tycoon that makes them feel slow here. Anyway, that's it. We reached the goals for this scenario, and I finally caught the confetti for this one on camera. So, uh, yay, I did that at last. Also, yeah, let's do a quick POV of this one. I always forget to uh, follow the coasters. I also got some questions on the last video still why I don't do on-ride videos. Basically, the game doesn't have on-ride POVs from uh, the get-go. You can get a mod for that, but I want to keep this a vanilla playthrough just to make sure that I don't misrepresent anything of the game or cheat my way through the scenarios. And also, for me personally, I prefer to keep the game in isometric mode. It's not meant to be looked at from 3D perspective. Um, and in in a way for me it kind of breaks the immersion of the game itself because part of the attraction at least for me is the isometric perspective and the distance that you keep from the stuff that you're building um, so yeah those are my choices for not doing any actual on ride POV shots but um, I think following the coasters is decent enough anyway let's get back into the uh, main map and see what else we got I don't know what scenario we're gonna go next, so I'm probably gonna go for Biscayne Beach, but I'm still curious to see what the new scenario is gonna be. If it's a fun one, I might play that one instead. So as a trophy, we get one of the cranes of the harbor. Uh, oh, and it even builds a little harbor platform over here. That is pretty cool. Oh, and we get a bunch more. All right, that is, that is really nice. So we got not one, but two new scenarios here. So it's gonna be, ooh, yeah, it's gonna be difficult to choose which one I want to play. So Highway Hijinks is another one that Joshua made. Um, I only added some scenery to this map, but it's really Joshua's map. And then Honey Hills is one of the maps that I made. If I recall correctly, this is one of the first ones that I ever made. Oh, I've got to click on that. Uh, <laughs> just whenever it passes by, I just can't help but click on it. Uh, so, Either one of these would be really fun, I think. I think I'll wait with Biscayne Beach because I just got done with quite a bunch of tropical maps. And 
I think highway hijinks would be a really interesting one to try for now. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that for the next episode. It all just depends on what I feel like when I start recording that one. But it's probably going to be highway hijinks. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I hope to see you guys next time.